up? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with um a fabulous guest. And you know she has to be fabulous for me to well, I didn't even interview her yet. But she's fabulous because I know she's fabulous because um she's doing things that a lot of people don't realize that people are doing. And a lot of women are behind this incredible profession. Um as you know, I love planes, trains, and automobiles. And that's literally the, the gist of it. I, but also, I don't want to bore you with the fact that I know all these things on a technical level. And you may get confused. Um, she's going to know what I'm talking about when I know that this thing is going to take off and how it's sitting in the sky 5,000 feet to 40,000 feet, seeing birds and everything. But I, we'll get to that. So I want to introduce a very important sister. She is um, actually live very far away right now. I mean, far away. I mean, six hours ahead away. I mean, it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon here. It is six o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Excuse me, in the evening. Actually, when I spoke to her, I just said good morning. I had to catch myself because it's good evening. You know, we are, we are split over good afternoon. But it's good, good afternoon here now. So I hope you guys enjoy yourself. So ladies and gentlemen, airplane pilot. Oh, you're a first officer? Or I don't know if you guys say the same thing. First, yes, officer, yes, I'm a first officer. First officer, we feel way. Now she's got to say her name. I, I, I think the name is incredible. I mean, I have a huge African community around me. Huge. I mean, I don't know if you know Staten Island, New York, but there's a lot of Africans out here in Staten Island, New York. And, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So we want to welcome her to this stage, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for her. We appreciate you. Um, it is a pleasure. Um. You are a sister in the sky. Um, there is a union here called Sisters of the Skies. Do you know about that? No, not that one in particular. Okay. In America, there is a, a, a website, a coalition of black women, and mm -hmm. they call it uh, Sisters of the Skies. And um, I didn't realize that there are Sisters in the Skies as well in other countries. So we are in other countries in uh Tell me a little bit about yourself because there's so much to talk about. Jeez, where do I start? Okay, uh, my name is Rifilwe, and yes, you pronounced it correctly. And um, <laughs> I am a South African airline pilot. Uh, I fly for one of the major airlines in South Africa. I am 34 years old. I've got a husband and two kids, and I've been flying for about 14 years now. Wow. So you are pretty much a pro here. This is, uh, <laughs> I, I know you're going to be humble about it, but you're, 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 you're <laughs> with the pre Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, um, so, yes. Um, amazingly, um, your husband, um, is your husband. Um, am I pilot as well? Is he in a profession? He's in a similar profession, but not uh, not airlines. Uh, but he's more in a management position. So he's got fixed hours, unlike me. But uh, he understands, and he, he's he's flown before, so he's also a pilot. Wow. Okay, this is great. Um, where did this all start? Now I know you said you've been you're married. Shout out to your husband. Uh, you've been married for um, how many years? For five years this year. Wow. God bless you. That's amazing. That's a big deal here. So, you know, people are sitting like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> so this is amazing. Um, where did this all start now? You, you know, did you ever have an admiration for flying? Um, yes. Because I know when we see these cars, we see these planes all in the sky, and we're just like, wow, in the world. Like, where did this all start? Jeez, it um, started so many years ago. I mean, uh, as far as like five, six, I've always just admired, like, looking up. Uh, I, where I grew up, there were no airports close to me, so I could only just see aircrafts, like, flying past. And then um, my first flight, I was seven years old. We went, we flew to a, a coastal city called Durban in South Africa. And uh, for me, that was when the aviation bug hit. I mean, we were going on holiday with our family, but I looked forward to going back home because we were going to fly, get back into the aircraft and fly. It was just a short flight, but for me, it was just so ama amazing. 
and I got to we got to enter the the flight deck and I saw all the controls I saw the pilots and that was it it was I've never it's something I've always wanted to do I can't remember wanting to do anything else and yeah now the thing is, we all know that this 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 cockpit—that's what they call it there as well, right? Um, yeah, it's very it's probably the most impressive dashboard in the whole world. I mean, I could be in a car, I could be in a, a, a boat, you could be in a, a a train, but there's nothing like an airplane pilot cockpit. So knowing that you see this, was you ever afraid or more or less uh, intimidated to see all these different controls? To, to know that there's one day that you're going to just know all this stuff like the back of your hand? I think when I was young, I wasn't necessarily intimidated. When I when I first saw the cockpit or flight deck for the first time, I was just amazed. I was like, wow, this is something I would really love to do. But then when I got into flying, obviously when you start off, you don't start off in a big jet like an airliner. So the smaller ones, they have less controls, less switches, so it's, it's, it kind of builds you up to that. So it wasn't, I wasn't really intimidated. Um, although my flying career started in the Air Force. So that's where I trained. And, uh, well, I was, I was lucky. I was fortunate enough to start in the Air Force, which you fly like better aircrafts. And, um, but it wasn't intimidating. It was a lot of hard work. But, yeah, I was just excited about the journey because it's something I've always wanted to do. You knew that you was gonna. You owned it. You knew you was gonna do this. Now training, um, what versus the training here? Like, is it better in Africa, or was there something that you would have probably wished you could have did here in America? Is there any difference? How does that go? Um, I I don't know the training in America. Although, um, like our, as I said, I train in the South African Air Force. You do get uh, guys that do exchange programs and go train somewhere else just to get a different feel and stuff. I, I know with the military training, it's it's quite similar in terms of the different air forces around the world. Or so I train in the air force. With air force training is quite um, it's quite intense. Uh, it's a lot more. I'm not saying the civilian route is easier, but with the Air Force, there's a lot more involved in terms of the training because you do aerobatic training, you do uh, formation, flying. There's a whole lot of other aspects that you cover that you don't necessarily cover in the civilian pilot training side. Uh, but in terms of differences with other countries, um, I think it's quite similar because you, you, you train on um, like advanced aircraft. So, yeah, I don't think it's a, it's a big difference. Now, how long was the actual training when you, you know, to get into this? Uh, that is amazing. Like, how, how long was the process? And, uh, you know, for something to be a lot, some people are afraid of heights. So how intense was the training in the most, in, in the most incredible manner? It's, just, it's amazing to me. Well, I think a lot of people, we, you have different, these different routes that you take. I mean, my route was the military route. So, which involved um, a whole lot of physical training before you got to step inside a flight deck or a cockpit. So, uh, you know, with the military, you first have to do military training, with, with, which um, is a lot of intense physical activity, day and night for months at end, and it's very, it's very challenging mentally and physically. Uh, we did that for like a, a year, and then. Only the second year, then we did the ground, the ground school part of it. So all the aviation subjects, and mm. only in the third year, that's when we started flying. The actual flying took one to two years. I think we took a year and a half. It's all dependent on the weather, but yeah, yeah just over a year. As I said, the, the the Air Force one is is more intense, so it's a bit longer. Um, while if other people, they took the civilian route where they go to a flying school or or they get sponsors and sponsored and then but they still train at a flying school. I think it also takes them maybe a year or over a year, also depending on how far they take it because there's so many licenses that you need to get before you can uh, get a job in flying. There's so many ratings you need to do. So it's all uh, mostly money dependent if you are going the um, uh, sponsored route or or you, you're funding it out of your own pocket. And 
also weather dependent because yeah when you're still training there's also restrictions in terms of uh, weather wind rain and and yes. oh, yeah now when when you when you guys started on planes what kind of aircraft do you start on because we're under the impression that like they train you and then we're going to get into one of these big planes like do you try like do you start like on a Cessna like what kind of plane do they start on um if you go to a flying school um it's normally the Cessna 172 so it's a small aircraft or um, other aircraft there's other aircraft that are similar like a Piper and stuff like that but um i i trained in the air force so i was lucky enough that i trained on a pilatus pc7 astra it's an aerobatic aircraft so you can do all sorts of aerobatics with it and stuff so it's um it's much more advanced it's, um uh, it's faster so yeah now the thing is when you're on a cessna it holds about what four or five people or or does it hold 20 people I'm, I'm no, not, no, no, you start off really you know. small. I think you can like carry like probably two passengers at the back. But then there's also different types of aircraft. But then uh when you start your training, you tr- train on the small ones, or the 172s. They don't carry because uh, especially when you start training, um you can maybe carry passengers if you have like a PPL, but you you don't get uh paid for it until you get a commercial pilot license. So usually those smaller aircraft they're not for they're not for paid uh flying or um anything it's just for our building until you get your commercial license and so forth now it's crazy about that how in the world do they start on something that small and then do you remember your first day or getting on a massive plane like that and they're like okay we're going to fly this today like do you remember that day <laughs> Yes, yes. Okay. And as I said, my my route is completely different. So, um after I got I qualified, after I got my my wings and um in the South African Air Force, then you get to choose which which line you want to uh, follow. So, it's either fixed wing, helicopters or fighters. So, I chose helicopters. I was I I fell in love in hel- with helicopters when I was in the Air Force. So, I chose the helicopter route. So, I went to train same same thing we started off in a small helicopter called a Robinson R22 like a really small one just the two of you it's right. like so tiny yeah and did a few hours on that got my PPL on it and from there on um the South African helicopter that we use is called is an Oryx it's like a super puma if you know that aircraft right. and it's very heavy it's very powerful very very powerful So to get in from an R22 so small and so light to an Oryx uh, apparently with the first flight they always they always tell the um air traffic controllers that uh we have a like someone is training first flight so they already know that we're going to bust al- altitude because we're not used to that power and the minute you you, you lift off the aircraft is So What? that 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 for me was massive. That was like a massive jump from from the I think for me in terms of my career that was the biggest jump in terms of size of aircraft and how powerful it is and the momentum. Yeah, but then you bust altitude and then and then you practice practice at the end of the day, at the end of the week you like you can because you already learned how to fly a helicopter, you know how right. to hover, yeah. you know right. everything. So now it's just a matter of um of um just uh knowing the momentum of the aircraft uh the same thing, I'll, I'll say similar thing with the car the smaller a smaller car to a bigger car to a truck you know how to drive but you just need to get used to okay with well, this one i need to start braking earlier because there's so right. much so big right. so the same thing with the aircraft so you get used to it pretty quickly and then um and then it's like nothing <laughs> but Now, then in it, terms of fixed wing in, in terms of fixed wing when i went back to fixed wing um it wasn't a massive jump uh, i must say it wasn't as it was different but it wasn't a massive jump but the same thing momentum huge aircraft very fast just need to um know how to manage it so yeah. <laughs> now do you guys do miles per hour there do you do you like in other words here Uh, the average commercial jet flies about 500 miles an hour. What do you guys use? 
Um, well, in South Africa, the, the metric we use um, kilometers per hour, but in terms of flying, we do use uh, nautical miles per hour. Oh, okay. With Philway, I said it right. Did I say it right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> she is a first officer, um, an airline pilot, and she is literally talking to us live from South Africa. So uh, give her a round of applause just for that. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is this is far. And one thing I want to start this off before I go any further is: Have you ever? You actually flown a plane to New York City? No. Um, my airline uh, does fly domestic, regional, and international. And I wasn't, I, I didn't fly international. I could have. Um, you, you do choose. And I didn't because I, I just had a baby. And um, so I chose not to do that because if you do the international route, you be gone for like, a New York or Hong Kong trip, you can be gone for like over a week. So I don't want to be away from my family that long, especially a newborn baby. So I stay to do uh, domestic and regional. Well, c congratulations on your new baby. Congratulations on that. Uh, mm -hmm. You have two children. So how old are your two children? Uh, one is 14 and the other one is two. Oh, man. Oh, that's so dark. <laughs> so this is beautiful. Um, I don't know if you guys found out in the last video, we hate to repeat things, but just give them a little quick layout of exactly uh, who you are, what you represent, and uh, your profession, etc. Okay. Uh, my name is Rufile. I'm a South African airline pilot, and um, I fly the Airbus A320. And I'm a wife, a mother of two, and, and I'm also ex Air Force, ex Air Force pi helicopter pilot. Now you know what I was going to ask you. If they said Air Force, we want to know if you flow those those uh those jets out there because we know the jets be doing like eight hundred miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. In the, in the Air Force, I flew helicopters, and then now I'm on the Airbus. Wow! So you literally know how to fly a helicopter too. Jesus. Yeah, that is actually the best flying. I mean, I, I do enjoy flying airlines, but flying helicopters, especially in the Air Force, because you do so many amazing things, and I think that's the best flying ever. Now, the thing is now, so you're saying now, you could literally go on a trip, right? Like, just say with family, and let's say, for example, you got to take a helicopter trip. And a person is like sick, like, you know, oh, wow, you're like, oh, my God, you could actually, like we see in the movies, jump in that middle and take over that damn helicopter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, I mean, in terms of flying, I would think, I would maybe not necessarily compare it to a bicycle, but it's like riding a bike. If you've done it before, you just need to brush up on it. And 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 the biggest thing, I think, with flying, it's mainly the, once you've started flying already, it's the, it's the theory part, learning the, the technical side of the aircraft, learning the procedures, all the aviation laws and, and stuff. But in terms of the hands-on experience, once you've done that for a few years, it, it it's like second nature. It's like second nature. That's true. Like the same way how somebody would get in a car. Um, mm. I want to. I want to ask you. You know, this. This is a few things we want to get to the point of. But we know that this is a, a thing. Now in Africa, we know that in America it's very rare to see um, women or black women or black people, for that matter. I think the percentage here is like half a percent. Are there a lot of black women flying aircrafts in Africa? No, definitely not. Eh? Um, uh, funny enough, I just completed my degree, my BCom degree, and one of my and my last uh, my research paper was actually on um, it was on South African female pilots. I didn't really concentrate on black South African female pilots, but in terms of black, it's actually in terms of female, it's less than ten percent, and in terms of black, it's way less, way way less. I mean, <laughs> probably. I don't know, probably less than two percent. Uh, the different airlines that I've seen in in South Africa, it's always less than 10, 10 black female pilots, and that's like a lot because some of them will have like one or two. 
So it's, it's, it's really, we still have a long way to go. There, there has been some changes since I joined the, the, the industry 14 years ago, but it's not, it's not enough. So we still need quite a lot of other the, like female pilots to, to enter the industry. Now, the thing is, you, you clearly know all of the airplane pilots, right? So I, what I want to know is, here there's a union called Sisters of the Skies. Now, I want to know, because if it's not, I want to be part of this, right? So is there a union of South African, Black, or South African female pilots? Because you don't have to be Black to be South African. A lot of people realize that. But <laughs> are there, is there a union of South African female pilots that have some type of organization? No, not necessarily. Hey, um, there actually isn't. Uh, there's just a few. I think uh, there's just a few individuals who do like outreach programs into like poorer communities or going to uh, like uh, high school kids, just in introducing to them to aviation. But in terms of the the, the qualified airline pi- black airline pilots, um, female in South Africa, no, we don't. We actually don't have a union. <laughs> Okay, we got we got to talk about that behind the scenes. That is definitely something I would love to do. If you can literally yeah. put these women together, and I could do a representation here in the United States, forget it, because we'll talk about that behind the scenes. Because that's something <laughs> that I would love to do. But um, I'm pretty sure you have other uh, female pilots that you you're pretty close to. Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, I've met some in the South African Air Force and then the airline um, companies that I work for. So, yeah, I do know a couple of them. Okay, so we're going to definitely work on that. Now, the thing is, um, I'm putting together a documentary. The reason why we are obviously doing this live because she is in Africa. She's with her family. She's with her husband. Um, she's with her children. And uh, she's six hours ahead of time right now. So they, that's how far that is. The question is, what is the, you know, the fact that you're in international seas and do you fly internationally? Like anything that's international here would be once we go out to the United States. So how far do you fly or is it as local? Like, how does that go? Like as far as your furthest, your furthest journey? Uh, well, as I said, my uh, airline would be, it has domestic so that's within the country and um the furthest flight is to cape town which is a two-hour flight and then there's regional um, flights Uh, we go to mauritius uh, which is an island uh, destination holiday destination which is about four hours and the other um places in like west africa uh, that we go to and in terms of international, New York is one of the places. I'll probably give away my airline. <laughs> uh, but New York and as far as Hong Kong. We won't give that so, up. yeah. <laughs> not going to give that yeah, up. But... So if, you, if you're using some common sense, it's funny. Uh, quickly, DJ Seth Mix wants to know Airbus, what model want to look at them? I mean, she did say it, so let them know again. Uh, it's an Airbus A320. Basically, that's a big MF. That's a big, <laughs> that's a big so, so hold on. How many passages is on this monster plane? So, Airbus A320, it's more of a domestic regional aircraft. It's, it's mm-hmm. not used for like international aircraft. So for the uh, international aircraft that are going to New York and stuff, it will be uh, usually the Airbus A340, like four engine or a350 which is a newer airbus so it will depend on how far out you need to go so uh because as i said i i i've just been flying domestic and regional i've been on this h320 a320 we're gonna we're gonna uh, so airbus a320 now this this bus this bus is literally probably like this is your baby so you 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 see one of these are you able to pick out the planes when you go into it? Like, I want that one today. I, I like this color. Like, how does that go? How does that go? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, with, with, with the Airbus, well, well I, was, I would fly the Airbus 319 and 320. They're very, very similar. Basically the same aircraft. They're quite similar. But um, a lot of people like the A320. It's, 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 a, it's a better aircraft to land. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you do actually end up having like your favorites, but in terms of the whole fleet, 
all three A320s are basically the same in terms of in your airline. So this is this is the Air 320 right here. So this is this is the one yeah. that you you know not not to say this doesn't mean that she works here, but this is the plane that you actually, <laughs> you actually <laughs> so this is this is the A320 here? Yes. Yes it is. Oh wow. Okay, so you 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 are in the right side of that bus, and then you have your captain. Yes, the captain sits on the left. The first of this is on the right, but um, so it's, it's what you get on the left, you get on the right. In terms of the controls, the screens, and then okay. the switches uh, you share. It's the same. Yeah. Now, this is enormous. Do you ever? Riding your car and see one of these coming in and landing in and saying, "Damn, I actually, I actually operate that." <laughs> I think in the beginning, me. in the beginning, I think it was very surreal. Like I would see this aircraft, like I can't believe. Actually, I think my first time um, taking off in an Airbus three twenty at um, I because I, I came from. Um, the air force so i was flying helicopters so i didn't use a lot of runway and stuff so when i was actually flying this big bigger aircraft on a bigger runway it was actually quite surreal like wow this is i'm actually doing this i'm controlling this aircraft but uh <laughs> then you get used to it over time <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm, try, I'm trying to be cool because you know i get a little extra with this because this is like a big thing <laughs> So I'm really trying to really be cool right now. So this is like, so let me ask you a question because I got so many different words. Um, I asked an mm -hmm. airplane pilot this and, I, and, it, and she almost told me an answer that really shocked. When you're up in the sky about 40,000 feet, have you ever seen anything in the African sky that wasn't supposed to be there? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I think for me, no, nothing. I haven't experienced anything weird. No, uh, for me, it's just flying these these regional long flights mm -hmm. at night. Um, I've seen like shooting stars, like not like one shooting star, like so many shooting stars in a like short period of time. So for me, that's been something like very amazing. Normally, on the ground, you'd only be like you see see one shooting star. Yeah, yeah. So I think that yeah, one great experience. But I know I haven't seen anything weird. Because <laughs> you know, yeah, Although, <laughs> flying helicopters. Right. I have I have flown near uh, an active volcano. So I've seen inside a volcano. So that's what? one amazing thing. <laughs> yeah. God, yeah. Where was this volcano at? Where? Where was it at? <laughs> In uh, the Democratic of Congo. It's Central Africa. Yeah, there's wow. this massive active volcano. So I've actually flown. Let me not say how close, but I, I've seen the inside of a volcano. Oh, <laughs> active my volcano. gosh. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to be cool. I'm trying to be cool. So, <laughs> hold on. Okay, so when when you're operating this, that you see this volcano, you're close to it. Have you ever seen like? And I know this is such a rhetorical question, but have you seen elephants and or animals and stuff like that from the, the uh, an aircraft or a helicopter? I'm talking like wild animals because you know, of course, in Africa, we, we you have animals that we don't have here. Have you ever seen anything like that? No, no. <laughs> no, not. Are you talking about like flying and I see like animals on the ground? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Like um, when I was flying helicopters, um, mm -hmm. we have a place called the Kruger National Park in South Africa. It's a huge uh, tourist um like destination it's just uh the big we have the big five like all lions elephants you name it and i've flown helicopters there low level and i once saw like a pride of lions but like probably over probably like 30 like i've never seen so many lions in one place before because normally when you do like a game drive you see you're lucky to right. see maybe four or five lions but we saw like 30 
over 30 flying low level and then we circled them a bit and then flew away so i've i've seen so many amazing things uh mostly flying helicopters because you get to see, fly low level so you get to see more <laughs> okay uh we want to get a little bit of history on africa right now because you have like a double thing going on not only the fact that you're an airplane pilot but you are from the motherland you are from you live in a motherland <laughs> you, and i feel that there's a disconnect here because in my country the united states mm-hmm. there's a lot of black men that travel they travel to these latin countries whatever they do what they do for that reason and it's a little it's a little discouraging and a little disappointing to me i don't understand how there are so many sisters around this world and why is it that you feel that we don't see enough americans in africa so like let's say even though you're not flying international right now there's still this huge country that you live in continent Mm-hmm. Do you feel that there's a disconnect with American blacks versus Africans? Yes, uh, definitely. I think I, I think I, I'll have to blame mostly the media for that because um, there's so many misconceptions about South Africa and Africa as a whole. And I mean, Africa has so many countries, so many beautiful countries. I mean, I'm, I'm still yet to visit a lot of like African countries. Um, like for example, uh, like what you're saying is what you see on TV, the, on the media, they'll usually show you like the poor, the poorer side of Africa, hungry children. And yeah. yes, those things exist, but that's not what Africa is. I mean, it's like, if I, if you show me like the, not so great side of America and then I take it as it is. So I think the media is not showing enough of uh, our beautiful country and our beautiful continent. Uh, but I think uh, more and more people are starting to, well, be before COVID, let me say before COVID, before more COVID. and more people are starting to visit um, like African countries and South Africa. I mean, once you come here once, a lot of people actually return because there's so many things to see in South Africa, so many beautiful and different places. You get the ocean, you have the... Um, the, the mountains and then you have the wildlife so many different i mean we still um visit like south african tourist destination even now like new places yeah. that we haven't been to before yeah now uh geographically for anybody that's sleeping under a rock can you break down pretty much uh and this is such a crazy question but it has to be answered people don't really realize yeah. africa the continent Given the breakdown of South Africa, East Africa, um, mm. Congo, you know, give them some some more because I feel that Americans are not educated on truly what Africa is about. I think I think they they're just not. So without going to Google, can you give them a layout? Which is it's sad that this is like this, but what do you do? Um, yeah, I mean, Africa is massive. It's huge. Um, I'm from South Africa, which basically the south of Africa. I mean, imagine Africa is that big. We like right here at the bottom. So there's so many other countries um, that you can visit. And um, you have like your Kenya, you have your Tanzania, you have, I mean, there's so many. I can't even, I can't even name them all. There's so many. You just have to go look at a map. And if you want to visit any of those places, just have a look at like tourist attractions in those areas. There is just so much. I can't even like go into it right now because I, I wouldn't stop. But um, yeah. South Africa is right at the south, southern tip of um, Africa. And uh, yes, I, th- I think a lot of Americans tend to just call it Africa, but there's so many countries. Unlike North, North America where you have Canada, you have the U.S. and stuff. We have so many that you can't just refer to any place as Africa. Um, do you feel that you know being in a, you know we we have this impression that in America African men are very tough. Was there ever a time that you was not able to to operate a plane in your country because you were a woman? 
not to everything? operate. Are you talking about before my time? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. I think with us, remember South Africa, we came out of apartheid. So with us, it was more of a racial thing than a gender thing. So the gender, yes, obviously plays the role like it does mm, worldwide, um, like even in the US, but we, we came from a place where as a black person, you couldn't fly, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there were so many unexpected. Yes, in, in, in South Africa, I mean, we came from apartheid. So um, a lot of the pilots are younger because um, a lot of us only started getting into the industry in the past 10, 20 years, if you're lucky. There is, I mean, the ones that joined like 20 years ago, they're very few, far between, and uh, it would be a few uh, black male pilots. But in terms of female, only in the past 10, 15 years, it's, it's, yeah, it took us a long time, but mainly it's the, it's the race thing. It's it's a because we came from apartheid, we had to start from from scratch. Oh my gosh! So, um, have you ever dealt with any significant racism? I mean, I know you have to be somewhat careful because you ought to be like, I heard you talking about work and that's some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you ever came? Have you ever? Within the 15 years, I don't want to put nobody out there that you, you know, co-pilots, but within the last 15 years, have you ever experienced a mode of like, just total like, they see you come in and they're like, so your captain was on some like, they didn't want to talk to you, but they just were surprised or, you know, I know here in, in, in the States, they have to be real careful with that because if a woman even snips one nick of a problem, that guy could be in a lot of trouble because... Women mm. empowerment is huge here in America. Like he can't even look yeah. at her. So is that does that apply mm -hmm. to the same way here in, in in Africa as well? Yes, uh, I mean because we there's so few of us. Uh, it's still an industry that's uh, very male dominated, very white male dominated. So um, yeah, you 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 do get like undertones of racism, and then some are just straight out like obvious you know and um a lot of us ex experience that i mean even not just in the aviation industry i think in so many other industries we still we still have that uh, quite uh, present and um in terms of flying yeah you do even from the passengers they eh? it's i mean i've had um i'll say one example was uh, i landed in johannesburg very nice landing smooth landing and then the air, the the passengers as they're disembarking the aircraft, they sometimes get in the flight deck just to say hi and everything. Mm -hmm. And this one old man just came in and says, um, greets the captain, mm -hmm. doesn't greet me, doesn't even look at me. And then he says to the captain, yes. And then he says to the captain, oh, very nice landing. And the captain said, oh, um, that it, it, it wasn't my landing, it was the first officer's landing. And the guy didn't even turn and look. He just said, okay, bye, and he left. So it's like he couldn't believe it that I, I did. And I've had another time where somebody comes in and also I had a, it was my landing, did a great landing, and um, asked, and she, the, the person came in there and asked who did the landing. The captain said, I did it. And she says, oh, wow, are you still training? Like, still no, I'm training. not training. <laughs> why, why would you assume I'm training? You know, like, so you, you do get it from passengers. You do sometimes get it from your colleagues and um, still something that we, we, we deal with. So, yeah, unfortunately. You, you, you know, it's, it's just really sad because, um, you know, clearly the man could even give you any credit. Um, but see, you in the ability of, and, and, and what you're doing shows that you clearly overcome it. But it's just sad that, no matter what you do, see if you live for others, that validation would have really destroyed you. But knowing yeah. that you believe in yourself, you knew you were able to accomplish anything. Like I just landed this plane, you clown. Like you could have said, that. yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You could have said, Listen, you bozo. Like yeah, now I gotta get a little hood on you. But you know what? It's cool when you know that you keep your integrity up, and you know it is. But. um has it ever been a situation? I know as pilots, you guys um, 
see somewhat, but I, I'm hearing that the, the the crew sees a lot more the <laughs> of crazy stuff on the airplanes. <laughs> so, uh, what was the craziest thing you ever heard that happened on an airplane in regards to somebody seeing the craziest thing? You see, somebody doing something crazy. Yeah, somebody doing something crazy. I mean, you can't really see that because you're clearly operating. This yeah, way, yeah. You can't be um, like, hey, I think hell, be quiet back there. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time where there was a time where um, we had to divert. Uh, we couldn't land at our destination because of the weather. Because sometimes the weather you, it'd be so bad that you you know, it's out of the aircraft's limits and you can't land. So we had to divert. So we landed somewhere else and we couldn't. The passengers couldn't dis disembark. So right. we had to wait for the weather to clear a bit so that we can just refuel and go back. And. This one passenger, so obviously we're waiting in there 30 minutes. There's so many aircraft that diverted. So we're waiting to refuel and then waiting for the weather, basically. And this one passenger was like shouting at the at the flight attendants. And later on, the captain got involved just trying to find out what's happening. And it, it, this guy was like, he had to be in a meeting in like 30 minutes, the most important meeting of his life. We don't care. We don't understand his business, and he wants to get out because um, the destinations weren't weren't actually too far away from each other. They were like fifteen minutes in terms of flying, but right. uh, driving also like within an hour. Like it wasn't too far. So this right. guy was like, "I want to get off at this diversion, uh, and and I'll take an Uber to where I need to go." And we said, "No, you're not allowed to disembark because uh, the final destination is not this place." Right, and right, right. that guy was just screaming and hitting the the the, the, the like uh, doors and shouting at the cabin crew. Such a huge, yeah. He's like basically started a fight, but luckily the pa other passengers like apprehended him and like calmed him down. And eventually, like thirty minutes later, then he 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 relaxed a bit. But yeah, I think that was the most intense I've seen because that guy was out of control. Now, but luckily, here, it was on the ground. It wasn't in the air, so okay. that was another thing. The well, minute you know, here, the air, that's a whole different ballgame. And Miller, let me tell you something. If that happened here at JFK Airport, they would have locked him up and took him off the plane. Yeah, I think we were like a few minutes away from calling the cops to come get him. Like, I think I think that's what made him like get like calm down after a while because they told him that if you get out, you're getting arrested. You're not going to meet him. So rather wait here and then we'll go back to the de destination. So, yeah. And then probably in the, in the air, I would say the most would have been when we had uh, somebody who, who passed out in flight. And then luckily we were close to our destination. So we just called in and they got the ambulance and we got priority landing. And, yeah, when we landed, parked and there was a quick... Yeah, but that wasn't it wasn't a major event. Yeah, luckily we were not we didn't have to divert or anything. So you never see nobody like running around playing naked or nothing like that. Nothing crazy. Like no, that. luckily <laughs> not. <laughs> I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> no, let me, I don't want to see that. <laughs> let me ask you now. So it is you are the one talking in the plane when it's like, you know, prepare for takeoff and we're landing here and uh, right now it's uh, 50 degrees, wherever we're crossing over the Congo. You, you, you're the one saying that. Yeah, in, in airlines, well, I think most airlines, um, it's it's 50-50. So you, you, you divide the legs. So if we have to go to Cape Town and back, uh, I might go to Cape Town and then the captain might, fl might fly back from Cape Town to Joburg. So when the, the one that's flying We'll do that. Those announcements in terms of weather, what time we'll be landing, and all those. So it's actually fifty-fifty. So in terms of flying and talking and uh, doing the radio work with the air traffic controllers, it's a fifty-fifty thing. We share the, the the workload. Now, how far are you from becoming a captain? How long does that take for you to do that? <laughs> that actually, it's it's very weird in terms of airline because um, okay with with. In the av aviation, you get three types of licenses. So you get a PPL when you just started. That's the one where you can't you can't get paid for it. So you normally you won't get a job. 
And then normally then you do your hour building and then you get to your commercial kind of class. And that's when you can um, get a job. So most people that's where when they enter like airlines and stuff, they have a commercial pilot's license. And then the last, uh, the, then it's, then you get the ATP. So the airline transport pilot's license. So uh, that's the last the highest obtainable license and that's the one i have i got it five years ago so the minute you get that technically you can become a captain but the restriction now comes with the, the airline you're in you might join one airline and if you have that license the, um their requirements might be if you fly for them for three years you can be a captain or for five years then you can be a captain and then or if there's like a long list of first officers that you found there that mm -hmm. still need to become captain, it can take 10 years, it can take 15 years, depending on the size of the airline. So becoming a captain, it's not, uh, at, once you have that that license, you can the, become a captain. You have, the one that you have is, the, is the, yeah. so that license. Yeah, so I've, I've had it for step. five years now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had it for five years now. So depending on the airline. If I was flying, if I know for one airline uh, that I know you can become a captain after five years. So I would have, uh, I would have been eligible to become a captain. Uh, but for other airlines, it takes longer because there's just so many people waiting in line. So it's not mostly about the, um, at that point, you already have the experience. So at that point, it's just about waiting in line. Now, are you... <clears throat> which is incredible. Um, are there any black captain, female captains? Nope, not in the airlines. What? Nope, not airlines. Yeah, that's how far far behind we are. <laughs> you don't know, that's, that's, uh, that's interesting because I, I, I need that. I'm pretty sure there's captains here because the Sisters of the Skies, mm -hmm. I'm I think there's a couple of captains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen in the US. They are. I've seen a few captains um, on Instagram pages. I've seen a few of them, but in South Africa, airlines, no. Um, in the Air Force, wow. yes, they they are a few, but also like a handful. Um, you're going to be the first captain. <laughs> I'm telling you. Watch. I'm telling you. <laughs> Watch, I'm gonna make sure that <laughs> you're gonna be the first female captain. I, 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 I see that because you know, let me ask you a question Would you be able to do that job right now? Yes, uh, it's basically in terms of the hands on and stuff, it's basically what I've been doing. It's basically what you do as a first officer. Uh, it's not as a captain, it's just now about the responsibility and accountability because it's a huge leadership position so you're responsible uh, um, for the everybody on the aircraft so as the first officer but, but as the captain you are accountable something goes wrong you you have to answer so uh, yes I, I i am ready um so yeah i'll just wait and see i'm telling <laughs> yes. you i'm telling you because i mean you would be a captain to me if i was flying a plane right <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know it. <laughs> Not to say that I would know, but if I still, you would still have to be over me in the supervision because you have to, you have the experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now here, um, I know captains could make up to a half a million dollars a year in America. Is the pay scale the same out there, or is it is it the same as far as like it's you know how, how does that work? It, it all depends on the airline or the company you're working for. There's um, some airlines that are uh, not so great and other airlines which have much better pay and benefits. So I, I'm not sure in terms of comparison, but I know like they had been like from South Africa. A lot of people had gone to your Emirates and your Cathay Pacific and like for better uh, pay and stuff. But yeah, it's it's still good, but it depends on the airline. Now you're able to come home every day, or you're able to be home with your family every day. Yeah, the the, the reason why I decided on staying on domestic and regional was so that I can be home more. Um, I'll still um, fly, like you might get a night stop. Uh, maybe a, you a lot of times you 
you're gone maybe for one night and then the other flights are like return same day, return same day. And then another time, then you've gone for a night or two nights and then you're home for three days. So it was actually, it was quite a nice balance of, it's like a nice balance of flying and, 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 and home time. So that's what, that's yeah. what I enjoy about it. Where, while with international, you'll be gone week. for long. Yeah, over a week. But then when you come back, you off for a while, but then you're like jet lagged and you're tired yeah. and then you're back again. So that's why I prefer the domestic and regional flights. Domestic, that's something I never knew that. So domestic and regional flights is the way to go if you still want to have a life with your family. Yeah, yeah, you're home more often. Yeah, you don't, you still do night stops, but not so often. Or and they all they're not. Um, I mean, gone for one night and then the other flights where you return the same day. So you actually still get to see your kids every day, almost every day. And um, yeah, I, I think it's great. It's different for everyone, hey. But for me, that's that's that it works, works wonders. Works. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Um... What do you guys have? I know you guys have privileges. I know here we have buddy passes when there's somebody that knows somebody that works in the airline. Do you guys call it the same thing there? Like, I mean, not to be ghetto about it, but like, hey, hey, what's going on? I'm going to be in Africa. I need to get a, <laughs> I need to get a discount. What do you guys call that? Is it called Because we call it a buddy pass. Yeah, it's, it's something similar. Um, where it's different with every airline, but I know with mine it was at some point changed where it it wasn't just anybody; it had to be family, and uh, you, yeah, it had to be family, and you register them like on a like online and something, right. and then yeah, so it could be like your obviously your immediate family gets like the best, the good deals and stuff, and then um, while your parents and your baby siblings and stuff they also get a discount, uh, okay. but you couldn't yeah, be like good. friends and stuff. Yeah, but it's still same same thing. I think most airlines, if you work for an airline, there are those benefits. Gonna do that, right? I'm just letting yeah, you know if I'm yeah. coming from if I'm going to Africa one day, I'm gonna be like, hey, let's like, what's going on? We gotta talk to these people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now the, the thing is also, um, there's so many different levels to this. Now, living in Africa, I want to go back because I think I think you know Africa is an amazing continent. Uh, how could you encourage not only the Americans, but how do you encourage black women? A uh, woman out of America, because people think that people in that South Africa is just always black. It's white people too, right? Yeah. See, so how do you? How would you encourage more women to to be in the position that you're in? Because it's clearly lack of it. I mean, I already know you're going to be the first female captain, and I'm going to cover that story the minute this happens. Because once we get this, once we get this organization together. It's gonna happen because I'm gonna be like, hey, there's a problem here. Cause I can talk, they can't say it. I'm gonna be like, listen, um, I have five women here that are all female pilots. Something is wrong with this picture. And I guarantee <laughs> that. But I'm serious, I'm serious about that. So how would you encourage yeah, yeah. <laughs> women to, to to fly? Because there's a lot of people here in America that's listening and they're like, you know what? I don't know what I want to do with my career. Um, I don't know if I'm too old. Um I wanna do something that's challenging, such as this. How would you encourage them to get into the actual aviation profession? Uh, well, first of all, I mean, if uh, somebody that's already like older, like up, uh, already chosen another career path and they'd like to change it, um, obviously you have a, a, a passion for it, which is which is great. Uh, but I'd say uh, start like going around. There's so many flying schools or. The, the the great thing nowadays is social media. I mean, Instagram, you can search for any like pilots. There's so many pilots that share their stories on Instagram and, and Facebook and you can follow them and actually get to firstly get firsthand a day in the life of a pilot. Is it really something that you want to do passionate about? And um, I would really encourage them to, to, to uh, basically pursue to p Nathaniel. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just, I had to give you an exclusive. Keep going. <laughs> I'm here. You were breaking <laughs> up. Did you do? You hear me? Can you? Yeah, I can hear you now. I, you disappeared for a while, so I'm not sure if no, you I, heard everything I just said. I heard everything. I was giving you the exclusive. 
I, want, I wanted them to see that, that African princess. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they should do. So now the, the thing is, um, you don't know if, like you said, you don't know if it's any better, but at least in South Africa, they can still do an aviation school. doesn't matter if it's in America. doesn't matter if it's here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of countries have uh, their own flying schools. Um, in South Africa, we have a lot of uh, great flying schools. So I'm sure it's the same in, in, in the United States. And um, so basically just researching in terms of great uh, flying schools, they are quite expensive. Flying is a very expensive um, uh, yeah, career to get into. So in, in South Africa, a lot of people try getting sponsorship. It's difficult to because it's 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 such a, it's so expensive. But getting the sponsors, uh, getting it sponsored um, through government or private companies is great. I was lucky enough that it was through the South African Air Force mm -hmm. uh, because if you're paying it out of your pocket, it can really really get um, yeah. It's it's very draining. So I wouldn't unless you like rich rich. I wouldn't right. recommend. Um, taking it all the way from your out of your personal finance, and maybe the first um, license, which is the PPL, right. and then maybe from there on, trying to get some kind of sponsorship. I think that would be the best route to take. Or, um, but yeah, in terms of um, encouraging other like people, females to join the industry, I think the best place is. Um, we, we, we usually like approach schools. We approach like high schools, especially um, in like your more disadvantaged areas where they don't have like access to the internet a lot or access to, or like airports and, and, and they don't know that black female pilots exist, you know? So we yeah, usually go there. I mean, just, just showing up there with your, your, your uniform, that's like a huge yeah. thing for them. So um, that's what we do. And um, we just talk to them, like uh, explain to them what we do, show them like the pictures of the aircraft we fly. And uh, they just, a lot of them are just so motivated and they wanna, and then they wanna pursue that, that, that uh, career. But if we don't go to the schools, they'll never see that what is actually possible, you know? Right. So for me, that's that's like a big thing. That's uh, hopefully over time. I've actually seen in South Africa, there's actually more and more female um, like pilots who are just starting up with training and stuff. So it's 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 great. I think ten years from now, it will be a much bigger uh, number than what we have uh, now. It, it it should. I, I think the more I think what we need to do. I mean, clearly this is not the last time we're working together, but. Um, when you do come into, or whether I'm in Africa, I don't know, but when you do come into the United States and you come into JFK, the International Airport here, or New York, Newark Airport, because I live near both, um, I would love to do something where we could actually go to a school. And, and, and I, think, I, think, I think these young African women here need to see another African woman, because I don't, there's a black woman, but to see an African woman from their hometown, from their mother's hometown, that's a big mm. deal. And I think yeah. we, we need to do some footage on that. I mean, as long as I press record, that's they see you here on U.S. soil talking to another, yeah. another African woman. We'll go to an African neighborhood here. But I yeah. think once they see that, that will be something where they're going to look at you as like a hero. It's like, it's like a person coming from the Navy and they're coming home. And they're like, yeah. wow, you, you, right? you know that. So uh, I yeah, would love yeah. to do that. Keep in mind, when you do come to America, we have to make sure we do that. I have to say this now because I want this to be documented because I want to know that I got to get you in on this because I am, I, am, I am very, very determined that you are going to be the first <laughs> captain. That is because here you would have been, you know what I mean? And we would have just been like, oh, there's no other captain? Oh, excuse me, there's no captain <laughs> in America. That shit would have killed it. It would have been like, okay, I <laughs> You know, go back to Africa. I, I was told that from a lot of African people that I know, um, they were speaking in terms that, do you guys finance houses? In other words, I was told that whatever you have there, you own. Like here, we 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 we're in a lot of debt. We 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 borrow money from the bank to buy a house, 
rights and we don't own it for another 30 years. I heard in Africa, you own that. You know, I have a friend from Senegal. She's from Senegal and she's here. She, she has a hair business here. She makes some money, but she speaks in terms of how things are in her country. Is that true? Or do you guys, you want them nice because you borrowed the money? Some, no, for some, South, for some African countries, it's true. I've heard there are African countries where if you want to buy a car, you have to buy cash and, and stuff like that. In South Africa, no, it's very similar to the U.S. in terms of uh, we buy, um, we get a mortgage basically for a house. And wow. also your cards or loan, uh, re monthly repayments. So in South Africa, it's very similar. You, 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 um, there are a lot of people that are in debt, use of credit card and all that. So, but I, I think it's a lot of some of the other African countries I've heard that they buy um, cash, most of the stuff, yeah. Well, okay. So what would you say that's, you know, because it seems like South Africa is very similar to the, to the states in a lot of ways, um, yeah. do you have a mode of, of, is it a career that is obtainable to, like in other words, would you ever want to come to the United States or South Africa is doing everything or giving you everything that you need for you and your family? Oh, you mean, would I ever want to come to America? It? Yeah, to ever come to America to move. Uh, no, I, I love South Africa. <laughs> um, I, I love South Africa. I, I mean, um, actually, I was in New York before because before COVID, eh? We, we right. my husband and I uh went to we were in Manhattan, we we're doing all the touristy stuff there. Eh? Right. Um, but um, I, I love going on holiday, I love traveling. I mean, of course, I'm a pilot, so I love going, seeing, experiencing new things and stuff. But I love my, my home. Um, I love the food, I love the people, the culture, it's so diverse. I, I think I'll struggle to live in another country it's not impossible i mean yeah if we, i think i would leave if we really had to leave not because we want to i don't think we uh, both of us, uh, yeah yeah oh. both of us no no we don't oh, yeah. uh, no both of us yeah both of us it's great here we love it here our kids go to great schools so yeah no <laughs> you know what because you know what i always ask like if people leave such a, a incredible country I, i'm i'm in america like why do y'all come here? So many Africans that moved here, but you obviously have opportunities that kind of wouldn't make no sense. Like you're you're doing what what most people would love to do to have a profession, to have a career such as that. So I'm pretty sure that it's common that people that do come here. Um, great answer. Uh, in regards to cooking, you know, you said cooking is you know food is a big thing there. Um, but you guys don't suffer through obesity it's kind of like you guys stay in shape you know between you and your husband who's the one that does the cooking or who cooks <laughs> i would say i do most of it but he does he does it a lot actually he would i would say 60 40 he actually does cook quite often and when i would um like i would be flying let's say if i come back late from a flight or if i'm on a night stop he does the cooking and he actually cooks very well. He actually makes like mean lamp stews and mean, like he's, he's a very good cook. So I'm lucky in that aspect. So, so yeah, both a of good us black man. Yo, yo, yeah, yeah, these women here need to hear this. Yeah, yeah. I think he is actually cooking right now for the kids. As so, we speak. Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. I think they, they, they've probably eaten dinner without me. <laughs> We're not, we're not gonna hold you to. I'm gonna tell you something, sister. This is let me tell you something. A woman here would dream of having that. You have your man cooking in there with your kids now. Do you know how rare that is in the United States? I know, hey, I know because I have friends and I've seen and heard that. Yeah, not a lot of men do do that. I'm I was very I'm very lucky, I must say. And uh, my husband is also like hands on dad. I mean. He does everything from changing diapers to bathing the kids. I mean, the little one. And 
school stuff. Uh, so he's like hands on, and he still has a demanding job on top of that. So I'm very lucky. So it, 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 it's great because we're able to to balance work life because we we support each other in terms of all the different like family stuff. So it's not it doesn't like fall on me where it where in most relationship it actually falls on the woman. So I'm actually lucky in that aspect. Now, uh, this is amazing. So uh, I'm letting you know that's inspiring. So, yes, you ladies better get into aviation and get you a good man like that. Okay. <laughs> she, said, she, she said she ain't even trying to come to America. And you don't even hear that. She's like, listen, you, you see her face. She said, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm good right here. <laughs> you ain't going to be taking my man. Be good right here. I got me a great kid. Oh. <laughs> being, <laughs> being raised and um, being raised, who were your influences between your um, your mom and your dad? Like, where did this all start? Did you grow up? What kind of way did you grow up, and how has this inspired you um, to be who you are? You know, between you know the way you were raised with your parents. I had um, my my dad passed away when I was in high school. I was um, I was, oh my I was fifteen. <laughs> I was oh. I was fifteen years old. But growing up, I mean, I, I must I, maybe a lot of people say this, but I think I had the best parents. I mean, my dad was just amazing. Um, we had like my sisters and I. We had we grew up in a very. Uh, my parents are very liberal. And um, very supportive. How many sisters and brothers? How many sisters and brothers? Um, I three sisters. I grew up in a family with three sisters, so it was four girls. My dad, but my dad has uh, other sons, so uh, older sons, like before my mom. Uh, so I also have like older brothers. <laughs> so okay. yeah, so um, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the I grew African, up in a very the brothers. The African brothers ain't no joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, my, my my family, my parents are very supportive. Even after my my dad passed away, I mean, my dad before he passed away, he knew I wanted to become a pilot, and he was very supportive of that. He used to take me to air shows. Um, wow. When I when I was young, uh, yeah. So I know this is something he would have been really proud of because he wanted. He was very he was very excited and happy for me that I want. This is what I wanted to do. So even after he passed away, my mom like continued being very supportive. I mean, after I finished high school, I got into. I wanted to fly, but there's no. You couldn't. Yeah, the fl flying schools were so expensive that. I, I, I applied to university, like college, to go study aeronautical engineering, and I got accepted. And uh, two days before I went to start, like my mom would be like driving out. We bought all the stuff that I need for like college. And uh, two days before, I told her that I don't want to do this. That wow. this is not this is not something I want to do. You know, I've always wanted to fly. But yeah, of course, the flying is just too expensive. But I'm gonna try to get sponsorships. So can you give me a year? Can you give me a gap year? And my mom, same time, he says fine. Turn mm -hmm. around and uh, yeah. And I was lucky that I got into the air force that same year during my gap year. I think in May, I got into the air force. So um, taking that gap year and not going to study electrical engineering actually helped me because um, um, I got to apply so many places and I eventually got into the Air Force. So uh, I don't know if a lot of parents would have accepted that because I know some parents want uh, no, they you to yeah. Yeah, yeah, they mm -hmm. wouldn't have. So my mom has always been very supportive. So I know my dad was the same. So I think that, and also growing up with my dad, I was, um, my dad was like, wasn't the, you know, women should be in the kitchen. I mean, right, I right. I never learned how to cook. I learned how to cook when I got married. <laughs> really? I didn't learn how to cook when I was growing uh, up. African, yes, uh, never. It, wow. No, wow. I didn't have wow. to. My, I actually used to follow my dad around. I used to go fishing with my dad. My oh, dad wow. taught when, when my dad was teaching my older sisters how to drive. I learned how to drive at the same time. So I learned how to drive when I was 12 years old because wow. my dad let me do anything that usually a boy would 
is supposed right, right, to do you know what i mean so so in terms of gender my family especially my dad which is quite important he never restricted us so i think that's why it was very easy to choose this career and to stick to it and not so i didn't care what other people said on the outside because my family my mom and my dad were very supportive of it you know that that's 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 your foundation that's why you're the way you are yeah mm-hmm. yeah 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 and then we we actually i think i've taken a lot of pointers in terms of a uh, similar way that we trying to raise our kids you know we not uh, we have two boys we don't have girls so but we also trying to teach them that you are going to do everything that a boy or a girl uh, uh traditionally you have these gender roles but with my our kids we teaching them that you're going to do both so our kids the older one he's got chores washing the dishes the younger one uh, when i buy him toys i also buy him tea sets and kitchen sets because already yeah yeah already so i'm not going to teach them that men only do that and right. women only do that you do everything why not i mean you're a person you eat right so you, why don't you learn <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. so yeah i'm trying to sort of follow in the same way like uh, that my, my parents um raised us major well yeah your foundation is incredible you said you have three sisters you have two sons uh the oldest son um do you find him like what do you think he wants to do when he gets older he is more into like you know coding you know uh yeah, like coding and 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 programming so oh, he does okay. his extra extra murals at school he they do a lot of that uh coding and robotics stuff so technological he'll stuff so, he'll be he'll be uh, the IT he'll be set he'll be set I, yes me. yes exactly exactly so he he loves that so obviously then we try and nurture it and make sure that his extra murals he gets to do that and yeah Now um the one thing that is is it's important to me is in Africa I know that this is because in South Africa there tend to be a lot of white people right um we are of the impression that there's no such thing as white people in Africa <laughs> people don't realize that right who actually owns Africa like in other words we're hearing this is what we're hearing here in America we're hearing that Africa is not owned by us is owned by the white people in that tr- uh oh you are breaking up or oh, you're frozen oh. for a bit um okay. so it's such a contentious issue um as i said we we come from i mean if anyone can just google apartheid uh we yeah. oh, similar yes. to, yeah mm-hmm. yeah we i mean black people were not allowed to do anything in this country in terms of own property own land you know what i mean and work i mean do certain types of uh, professions and so it it's only been um, since 1994 that a country has been like a democratic country so it's a lot of the land and stuff it had been taken over by white people but remember before they came here it was only black people here yeah 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 so that that's where the issue came from now it's that black people were were forcefully moved removed from their from certain areas and then they moved in and then had uh, had um deeds of that place and then so now try it's very difficult now to try and undo all of that because people have have deeds and um or have bought the places some it has been passed down from generations but at the same time in terms of um black people is that um you have land that your ancestors or your great grandfather great grandfather used to stay there but they were forcefully yeah. removed so that that's the whole issue now in terms of a, a lot of black people don't own land i mean i'm talking about vast amounts of land i'm not talking about just where your just house, house right. is I'm about, right, right, yeah i'm talking right. about like enough land to farm and like all basically most majority of the farms are owned by uh, yes. white people in our country and um but um but there's a majority black people in the in the country in terms of our demographics 
So this still this this is the same issue here. So how are they getting the blacks out? In other words, if they owned it, how are they getting them out? Because people just wasn't educated enough, or the way they, were they giving them money? Cause yeah, because remember, remember this was like many years ago, and uh, I mean, the people were forced out with uh, I don't know, like they have guns, they have weapons, they have, you know what I mean? It's right. it's it's a, it's a long time ago, and and at that time there were no the, the, the people that occupied those spaces, there were no deeds. It was just in terms of this family or this tribe or this they stay in this area, you know what I mean? And then once they forcefully removed, and they signed the deeds and stuff, that's why that's what makes it difficult right now. But yeah, it's such a yeah contentious issue. You know, um, unfortunately, that, that same uh, nonsense is happening. That's worldwide. Um, do you guys stick together out there? Do blacks stick together? Considering that's an issue here, because I feel that black of in, in in New York, I don't feel that Africans and Black Americans are close. There's this kind of mode of this separation. It's mm. kind, of di- kind of divided, but. We feel that the Africans that are here stick together, and they mm. probably don't think we stick together. So there's no uh, there's that disconnect. But is that a same issue there? Like, do blacks cut each other's throats, or or do you guys have a medium of sticking together more than the white people do? Um, yes, in South Africa, like, we like do stick together. But then also remember, in South Africa, I think as opposed to the US, is that um, we are like majority. So the country is majority black people already. So everywhere you go, it's a black person. So it's, it, it, that makes it easier, I suppose. But um, the main thing, what, I'm, what we're seeing nowadays is that there's a lot of more black businesses like starting up and or establishing and stuff. And what I've realized is that a lot of us are now using uh, purchasing from black businesses or even black professions. So, for example, uh, having a, a black doctor and if you need another type of service, you go to, you, you look for a black service. And we actually have like a, a Facebook page where you can just ask for a recommendation for a doctor, for example, in this area. And then, uh, so they, they would give, people would just recommend all the black doctors in that area or lawyers if you're looking for a lawyer or somebody who makes a baker or whatever. So it's great. So uh, we, we actually support each other a lot. Like some people actually, it, we, even to the point where you, you want all your like service providers to just be black people. Um, right. So it is. We, so we do stick together. It is, and it's actually getting better. I mean, I would say ten years ago it wasn't exactly that, but um, uh, as time goes, more and more people are trying to just, in terms of supporting each other, because um, you won't find a lot of other races supporting. You know, um, right. they usually support their own. So why don't we do the same? Yeah. That's interesting, you said, because that's why. So if you basically see a black man with a white woman uh, and they married, uh, is is that considered like, hey, you know, that's wrong. You should have been with your black woman or is that accepted out there like to see that? To no, see it's, 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 it's accepted in South Africa. I don't, um, well, it's, I think it's accepted. Uh, I haven't seen people be opposed to it. The only people who'd be opposed to that is usually like a racist who's not happy about you know white people the racism yeah, yeah. <laughs> the race yeah, is yeah. mixing but um yeah it's actually no 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 issues i think maybe also it's not you don't see a lot of couples like that but i think you're seeing more and more now obviously, obviously because also again because of our history now you, you uh, guys are known yeah. It's, it's sad that you guys are known also uh, to take care of your skin, have incredible skin. Here in America, we see a lot of skin bleaching. There's a lot of situations here, even a community here called Park Hill in Clifton and Staten Island. It's like a huge uh, African uh, community. And they actually sell this. With apartheid and the fact that the white men has, uh, white people have 
show this segregation of splitting up and of showing superiority, which is terrible. Do you mm. feel that the fact that people were brainwashed from apartheid to believe that their skin wasn't superior, so now they want to be whiter? Yeah, unfortunately, we also have like those individuals in South Africa, which, yeah, it's quite sad because, I mean, in terms of as a country, hopefully I thought we would have moved from that because um, I think in those times, if you're black or if you're black and even dark skin, it was like seen as, um, you know, you're not, you're not human or you're not pretty or you're not. But then uh, nowadays, it's actually... Uh, of people that you meet day to day, you don't get a lot of that, but you do have individuals that do skin bleaching that you see in the media, yeah. like some celebrities and stuff. So it's it's quite sad. I mean, yeah. So um, hopefully we raise our kids better than that. And um, yeah, yeah and you definitely will. brainwashing and not being, I don't know, confident in your own skin. Yeah. So unfortunately that still happens here too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to keep her too long because she has to eat this dinner that husband is cooking. But I want to say this, right? <laughs> Tradition. I want to touch on two things before you go. Tradition. Would you consider yourself traditional? Because that is probably the biggest issue here in America because there's so many non-traditions, because so many women are doing uh, male-dominated jobs. Um, and a lot of men here don't necessarily want to marry a woman that's non-traditional because they feel as if like she doesn't need me so a lot of these guys tend to go to different countries to meet a woman to bring them back here because they want a traditional woman so um you being in such a traditional country yourself um would you still be considered a traditional woman with the career that you have I think with us, I, I've, I, I, the question you're asking, funny enough, I've experienced it um, differently when I was, because when I was in the Air Force, I used to go into, like, as I uh, told you, Central Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, was one, uh, there was one man once asked me if I'm, I think at the time I was like uh, probably 24, 25, 25 probably. And he asked me if I'm married. At the time I said no. He said, you have kids? I said, no. He, and he was like shocked. Like he said, at that age in this country, you got to be married and at least with three kids by now. And I was like, no. So I think for, it, it, it's, it's very, it's different in terms of the country you're in. But in South Africa, no. In South Africa, I, I think since the end of apartheid, where now um, a lot of black people, you, there's no more opportunity, so many opportunities where the, 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 you're able to get into industries or pro professions that our parents couldn't get into. So I think a, a lot of black women are very ambitious now. They want to become anything and everything under the sun. Yes, so yes. I think there's so many people, there's so many black females that are getting into these types of professions um, that... I think even the South African males are accepting it and you get a lot of couples that you find like a doctor and a lawyer or engineer. So you find a lot of those, especially if you live in the city. Um, it's actually not, it's actually the norm. Yeah, it's actually the norm. Even there and such a, such a traditional, whew, wow. Yeah. How old did he yeah. say you had to be? What, what did the gentleman, the person told you you had to yeah, be? I was 25 and he was shocked that I was like single with no kids. <laughs> Damn, bro, that's just crazy. So I, I, I feel that this tradition is changing. We're changing the stratosphere. So um, I would, I would love to have you back. I would definitely like to have you back. It is super, but I just want you to let us know. Um, give us a layout on your the point where you're getting up for the day to go to the airport, pick out your A3320, get on this plane, prepare for takeoff to the point of being in the sky and landing that plane. I want you to tell me how this all goes. Okay, so it depends what time the flight is because there's different, you know, sometimes you get morning flights, midday flights or evening flights. So I would say a typical, let's say midday flight, um, which, um, so it will be different for each day. So in, in, in that, on that day, I would wake up, um, I usually, uh, then my 
kids are preparing for school. So at, at the, if I have a midday flight or a later flight, I can actually see all of that and preparing for school and I'll drop them off at school and um, I'll go to the gym. So if my flight is later and I can uh, squeeze in an hour of gym, come back, shower, eat, and then go to work. And then when you get to work, you um, basically sign on for your flight and uh, then you start going through all the documents. Most importantly, you check the weather because that's, that's like, yeah, that's that will day. determine how you, yeah, that, that, that will determine how your day will be. And, uh, and then we go through all the documents in terms of uh, what flight level you're going to fly at. And, um, uh, and then you, you discuss the fuel because now um, if you're going to have weather along your route, you're going to need a bit more fuel to go around the thunderstorms. You're going to have your fuel for diverting if you can't let it get your destination. So you, you take uh, extra amount of fuel. or um, But then also you can't take, sometimes you can't take full tanks because also it's not economical. It, it, the heavier you are, the more uh, yeah. the more fuel you burn. So that's not, your airline's trying to make money. The and heavier you are, the more fuel you burn. That's true. Yes. Yes, yeah. So as much you can take a lot of fuel, but you can't just always take put in full full, uh, full tanks. I'm talking about for domestic, for for shorter flights. Obviously, for the longer flights, you take way more fuel. And then, um, yeah. So you the, the then the captain comes, and then you brief the captain on the weather. You brief him on the everything that the document you just went through, which is like your flight plan and. Mm-hmm on the fuel and then you discuss and then if there's any changes, you make the changes and anything else that you need to discuss. And then you check the way uh, you check if your aircraft, where, what bay it's in, and then you go out uh, to the aircraft and then depending on who's flying. Um, so as, as I said, we take turns. So if we're doing one leg to Cape Town, another leg back. So if, for example, I'm flying to Cape Town, I'll get into the aircraft, the captain, We'll also get in and then we'll do our, our checks. And then he'll just do the walk around where you have to check the aircraft on the outside. There's outside, certain, on outside. Yeah, outside. There's okay. certain things you check from the outside. So the engineer is also checked, but you also have to check. Like it's sort of like just <laughs> redundancy oh, just to make right. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then um, gets back in and then you there's a lot of checks and flows. So like all those switches you're talking about, yeah. It's things you you mem- you've memorized already, but you get used to them. The first few times, it's like, okay, it's that. But then after that, then it's just click, click, click. Uh, you know, it's yeah. it's nothing. Then you program the flight. This is where I'm going. I'm gonna go to all those points, and then um, and then then you start talking. Passengers embark. Then you start talking to the air traffic controllers. You get your pushback. You take C and then uh, then you take off. And then flight, hopefully as planned. Mostly, most of the time is as planned. Obviously, sometimes you might get little, like the, what we train for, you might get uh, minor to major emergencies. But uh, I've, luckily, I haven't experienced major in, um, incidents in the aircraft. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you land and... Usually if it's just a day trip, so you land that time, uh, I'll do the landing. So I'll do the briefing uh, to the captain, what I'm going to do. Yeah, before you land, you're supposed to brief because he needs to know, she needs to know what you're going to do. You know, although we both know that you're going to land on this right way, but you need need to explain that I'm using this arrival because there's plates that you um, you have certain procedures to land at a certain airport. So you need to say, I'm going to use this arrival, landing on this runway. When I land, I'm going to do this. I'm going to break. I'm going to turn at this taxiway and uh, taxi to this bay. So he, he needs, or she needs to know every single detail. And um, yeah, so go through all of that and then talk to the passengers, tell them weather and then our ETA and yeah, then do the landing. And you know, when you, you are, know my favorite part. My favorite part is when you go up, right? It's that part where you're going up the runway and the thing is just going fast and it's just going fast and it goes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. How do you do that? 
I, I, I have to hear this from every pilot. How does this part <laughs> happen? I want to know that part. I'm in the back. I'm in the back of the chair. When, when, in- okay, when, as soon as we, as soon as we touch down, um, obviously now that you you had you your power at a certain setting or um, and as soon as you touch down you're going to cut the power because you don't want to fly anymore right <laughs> and then cutting it then you take it into reverse so reverse thrust basically just does basically the opposite because now you you don't want to go forward anymore because the engine it, it takes you forward so you're trying to stop the aircraft as quick as possible so reverse thrust and then we also use brakes but then yeah, um, right. a lot of the most, yeah a lot of the more sophisticated aircrafts uh, same as the airbus a320 you got auto brake that you can actually just press a button before when you're still in the cruise and during your briefing and when you land you don't have to touch the brakes the the auto brake will now just start braking so what? that's that's the one. yeah that's the nice thing about like, sophisticated aircrafts man you don't have to <laughs> a lot of the stuff the aircraft does you just need to know how to 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 set it up so how to program the stuff and how to manage it and how to take over when it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing because it's it's it is a uh, man made uh, stuff so sometimes right, they right. might not do. Oh, yeah so we right. always have to be you always have to be in the zone. You, you don't just like lay back and relax and stuff. So, right. yeah. So, um, yeah, then we land. And then now we take, uh, now I become, now the captain becomes pilot flying. So then I go just look, uh, do a walk around the aircraft, come back, we go through our flows again. And then now the captain's flying and then I'll be doing the, 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 the radio calls with the air traffic controllers. And then we do the same route back. And then we're back home. And then, yeah, it's actually, that's like a day in the life of, that's a typical um, one-day trip, um, short wow, trips. That, and you get back home that, and then, yeah, you still have <laughs> a bit of time with your family. A lot of fun. So, what, what, what do people know you as? What makes you unique in the, in the aviation? Do people know you as the great lander? What, what, like, what, 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 what is unique about you as a pilot that people know about? As a pilot... Great. Yeah, just as a great working person, a uh, great attitude, or you, you fly fast, you ride, you, you do the, <laughs> trip, the stars. Uh, you know? <laughs> uh, I would like to think um, great attitude and okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So y'all, y'all don't get into no arguments like, oh, yo, you you did it, you did that. Like y'all don't go into arguments, right? No, 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 we don't. <laughs> <laughs> You put the damn thing over there, man. I didn't do that. You don't want to see the belt. <laughs> you know? No, it's actually quite in the, in the aircraft. It's actually uh, before you the, when you're busy with your training. Uh, the, you, there's actually checks and flows that you learn and certain like these procedures. So right. um, th- there is there's a way of doing things. So there's standard operating procedures that you actually have to follow. So even if you don't like somebody that you're flying with, there's actually things that need to be done and they actually get done no matter the whatever is between us. You know what I mean? So that's the great thing about having those types of procedures is that the work still gets done regardless. Now, uh, it's not a level. You guys, you're not able to let anybody in the cockpit though, right? You can't show anybody around the plane that could come into the cockpit. It's forbidden for people to go in there? Well, since 9-11, 9-11 basically affected the whole aviation industry. Um, it's 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 now very strict. You can't just uh, get in the flight deck in the air, in the right. air, but on the ground. So when you're disembarking, you can ask the flight, flight attendants if you can just um, chat to the pilots. That's allowed. But in the air, no. Wow. Okay. All right. So they could, somebody could take a picture in there on the way out. Yeah, on the way out you can. Yeah, you can get and take in a picture. Cockpit. Yeah, on the, yeah after landing in South Africa though I don't know about the US but in South Africa yeah. yes you can. Yeah. Okay. I uh, unfortunately I'm gonna have to go to South Africa dudes because they're not even allowed us here. <laughs> mm. we, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you so much. Um, again, I, like I told you, um, I'll talk to you about that real quick offline. But I definitely want us to definitely do.
something together. Please allow. And of course, uh, I want to interview also a, a stewardess on, on a flight attendant on the plane as well, because I know that they have some amazing stories. Um, oh, no, they have stories for days. They see everything, eh? <laughs> everything. They see everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, U UGT, before you go, he wants to say they have procedures and checklists. One of my good experiences was to be in a cockpit in a B-767 approaching Cape Town. Awesome experience. Oh, nice. Lovely. Cape Town, beautiful, beautiful city. <laughs> now, UGT says this. Now, let me ask you something. Um, What is a B-767? A B-767. Uh, it's a Boeing. It's a Boeing. So, you know, you oh, get oh, uh, you get different types. Yeah. The, one of the biggest uh, actually competitors is Boeing and Airbus. So that's a Boeing. Yeah. And um, what is your dream? Your dream plane to fly? I actually haven't flown a Boeing. I would love to fly a Boeing. There's so many different types and sizes. Uh, one of my favorites is 747, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I'll ever get a chance to fly that aircraft. But um, definitely flying a Boeing, any Boeing would do. <laughs> any Boeing, that Boeing. I, I heard that for the last one. They said the Dreamliner. So I think it was called the Dreamliner. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay, I'd like well, to fly a Boeing. Uh, most Boeing and Airbus, they're quite uh, different. A lot of, like, Airbuses are fly by wire. So, uh, a lot of the Boeings, you still have, like, you know, your controls right in front of you, while the Airbus is like a little joystick on the side of the aircraft. It's very, it's very, like, chilled. It's very, <laughs> you that's, don't sweat. That's, that's the plane that you fly now? It's like a, a joystick? Yeah. Yeah, oh, the joystick okay. on the side. You have, the area in front of you is, is like, clear. You, while with the Boeing, the, the, the control, the flight control is right in front of you. Oh, With the Airbus, okay. the, there's nothing. If you can, if you Google Airbus, like inside the cockpit, you'll see that there are no flight controls right in front of you. It's on the side. It looks like a joystick. Airbus um, cockpit. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got this. So you could. So right now, you can tell us basically what this hold on. So that's amazing. Um, so does that make it harder or easier? Um, it makes it easier, actually, because with a Boeing, a Boeing, it's not only just Boeing, but also other aircrafts that are similar in terms of having the flight controls right in front of you. It's a lot of work in terms of, I'm talking about physical work now. If you're coming into land, and the and the place and 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 there's like um, strong winds, especially like a crosswind when it's coming from the side. There's you there's actually a lot of manipulation you need to do with those controls. So, but then on an Airbus, it uses flyby wire, so everything is very modern. Everything is um, it's controlled by computers. So that the difference so look, is now when you're flying. Look at this right yes, here. There's the, there's the joystick. Yeah. You see it on the left, and there's one on the right also. So it's all for both the first officer oh. and the captain. So okay. it's very that you you make very small movements. So unlike with a Boeing, where you'd be like just jerking it left, right, forward, front. With the with the Airbus, it's just very gentle movements, and so it makes it easier. But uh, they are they there is some getting used to, especially if you haven't you've been flying like a flying like a Boeing or any other aircraft. So but it does make it easier. Airbus is very it's just mostly computers. So look at this. So this okay, so now you're on the right side of this. This mm -hmm. is the joystick. What are these controls up yeah. here? Those are just at the top there it just switches for like aircon, for like the heating, for light for lights. It's not the yeah. But then yeah, also at the top, just a bit uh, back, it's also the firefighting stuff. So if you have a fire in your one, like one of your engines or the APU, like shutting it and all that, so you get all of that up there. But then that's also 
use it maybe for emergencies so it's not stuff that you use often so the stuff you use often is basically the the screens in front of you that's what that's, that's yeah that's what you use like in terms of basic flying now what is this on the feet uh yeah they they these pedals there yeah the pedals are your rudders and brakes so the rudder and brake is like one one system and be behind this what is all this here which which part oh that's another seat you got you you have like uh jump seaters like people like somebody can sit there and watch you so you usually get there's two of them in the airbus a320 and then you also have circuit breakers back there also it's not something that you you normally use in the air uh, it's normally on the ground and yeah so a lot of the switches you actually don't use, you hardly use eh? <laughs> it's only on right. like certain you follow a checklist so normally a checklist will tell you to do one two three but a lot of the stuff you use day to day it's not it's not that much <laughs> Now how about this here what, what what do you bring the plane up and down with right here Uh that's the that's for the power that's the power so that's the engines basically so on takeoff you you push them forward both of them for full power and um oh, that's yeah. how you basically going to start moving forward and then you're going to use the joystick to for lift off and then you're oh. going to use the joystick for landing Okay, so this this is how you build the speed up. Now you 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 yeah. increase the same speed in the air as you're going. You increase that speed, right? Yeah, but then you get to a certain cruising um, cruising speed and stuff. So, but in the Airbus, also being very sophisticated, once after takeoff, you you leave it at a certain setting, and then there's auto thrust. So the aircraft actually, uh, depending what level you are, what you're doing, it will actually reduce and increase the power without you like having to touch it there's so many automated <laughs> like you get autopilot but you also get auto thrust where you don't have to uh, be like the old school way of just, uh, manipulating the the the, the, um, the power levers to get a certain right. power setting or speed the aircraft will do it for you as long as as i said the airbus is a lot of like it's computer it's, you just programming it and then you manage it but yeah, then you can take, you can take over if it's not doing what it's supposed to do you can still fly it um in terms of uh, manually but a lot of things it's just very automated and there's very, there's a lot of redundancies if there's something breaks um if something stops working there's uh, another system that just takes over and takes over it all right this is a a3 yeah. airbus 380 what, what, what could you there's no difference in flying mm -hmm. this right Flyers. Yeah, um normally the differences will be the number of engines so A380 will be four. So if you look at the power levers, there should be four of them. I can't see much. I can't see that great from here. But the uh, with the four engines there'll be four levers. But um Airbus philosophy yes, is very very similar when you can fly the one you can basically fly the rest but in terms obviously you must still go through the training but um they're quite very similar. So you, you you use these levers to move the to to put engage the speed and you lift up with the joystick. How how do you yeah. turn in the sky? How do you turn with the joystick? Yeah, with the joystick. So oh. you're just gonna like like um go to left or right. That's how you turn. So, and, and and again, there's not an Airbus that you can't fly. You can fly any Airbus. Yeah, so, Airbus. They quite philosophy is quite very very similar. The the, the controls, everything uh, looks the same. I think it's just a matter of um, studying that specific aircraft technical, and also just getting used to the weight and the size of the aircrafts because they will be different. But in terms of how things work, the philosophy, the procedures, they're very very similar. So it's very it's easier to just go from one to the other. And you have you have two seats behind you. There's like how many seats are here? Yeah, two seats. Uh, well, on the three twenty, there's two seats. I'm not sure about the three eighty. Okay, this three eighty is yeah. a little big out here. So is this good? You can pull yeah. the seat back, no matter how big a person is. 
Yeah, you can push the seat back. You can push, take it up, down, pedals forward, backwards. So a lot of, I mean, I'm short and I can fit properly. <laughs> I just bring the pedals forward, seat up, and I'm good to go. And how tall are you? Um, 1.6 meters or 160 centimeters. So I'm not sure how converting it to to your we'll do, uh, yeah we'll, we'll find we're, we're gonna find that one out <laughs> that's how you're gonna see <laughs> so you crazy. use feet and uh let's see what's that so i'm five feet two i suppose is it five point two five, what do you five two five two and you fly that yes. big Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, bless you, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I don't want to take too much of her time. This woman is spectacular. This is my third interview with uh, Airplane Pie. This queen is from Africa. She's in Africa now. Um, she's doing the thing, and we're going to inspire. She is going to. You look at it our first. She's going to be our first female black captain. I'm, I'm, I'm watching. She. <laughs> I'm telling you, she's gonna be our first. So this is this is amazing. Shout out to Michael Petrovich. A lot of people here that are actually uh airplane fans as well. We salute you, sister. This is spectacular. And again, um, did you ever think of doing anything in the future, kind of giving like classes on because I, I think you would be great with that. Would you would, did you ever think of doing anything as far as doing any classes for anybody that would want to uh, kind of have like some mentorship to get into aviation? Yes, no, definitely. It's something I've actually done before. When I was in the Air Force, I used to do it quite often. And um, I think when I joined airlines and I got married, then I had kids, my, my life just uh, started becoming so busy. But it's something I'd really want to get back into doing. And as I said, um, going to 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 schools and like just trying to encourage those young like girls at a school level uh who are still choosing careers so it's something i'll definitely still want to do you know what hey i think we have a female pilot here um UGT says sis i'm from zim as an acquaintance from zim flies the b787 for emirates do you know that language there do i know sorry do i know what so, so, a, somebody said, sis, I am from Zim. Oh, um, sis, it just means like sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're saying, yeah, they're, from, yeah, yeah. They're, saying they're from Zim. I don't know where Zim is. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that's, good. that's great. Oh, they fly for Emirates. That's oh, okay. great. Um, Zim flies the B Boeing 787 for, em for Emirates. No, I think, I think this person says they're originally from Zimbabwe. But oh, they okay. they probably now in Dubai flying for Emirates. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, because we, we we also get a lot of like South Africans that uh, go and fly for Emirates for Cathay or for Qatar and stuff. So yeah, uh, Zim is um, a neighboring country. Yeah. But hold on. he's he's saying there are many black female captains in Africa. We said South Africa. No, you I was talking about we, South Africa, not not Africa, not the rest of Africa. So in Africa, yes, definitely they are. I've read and seen, but not in South Africa, not in airlines in South Africa. Uh, he says there was also a black crew on the Dreamliner flown from Ethiopia as well as Kenya that has flown to New York. Plenty of accomplished female pilots in Africa. Yeah, um, a lot of I think a lot of other like um, countries in Africa they do have quite a lot of uh, black black female pilots and black female um, captains. Um, I've seen like um, I think your Kenyan Airways, Ethiopian Airways, and stuff. So they are quite a lot. So I was just talking about South Africa, but in South Africa, unfortunately, we don't in terms of captains, female captains. Yes, so you're looking at the future first black female. <laughs> 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 so we appreciate you, Muchi T. We wish you were here earlier. Again, I have to let her go. Believe me, I could have her all day, but I'm just as hungry as she is. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Oh, okay. He says sorry. He's, uh, okay, sorry. I got you. I am surprised. I would have thought 
USAA has many female captains now. This is really surprising for me. Because um, you're asking about black female captains. So in terms of female captains, yes, there are a lot. In, there are like a few uh, in, in South Africa. But in terms of black female captains, they don't exist in airlines in South Africa. Oh, my God. Apartheid is still going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we still, still have a long way to go. Okay, let Tara shoot your question because she's got it. She's got to be out of here. Get, let, 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 give me like three minutes. Somebody just has another question for yeah, you, Terrence, Yeah, yeah, no, wait? I'll wait for it. All right, what's your question, Terrence? Yeah, so Muchi said, I, I, yes, I mean specifically black. Very sad. So he agrees with you. Muchi T says, yes, I mean specifically black. Very sad. Yeah. Wow. That's that's crazy. Tara, shoot your question. So, um, wow, this is crazy. So we're looking at history in the making. We're looking at history in the yeah, making. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopefully, hopefully in five years' time, in less than five years' time, would be like at least naming and like, you know, I'm hoping. So things are changing. So hopefully soon, yeah. But um, COVID has also like sort of um, delayed things and stuff. So hope for the best in the near future. Um, he said, "Congratulations, sister. Be the pioneer. Get your wings, sis. Get your wings, sis. <laughs> I got my wings. Be my wings." <laughs> Show them your wings. Hold on. Show Thank them. you. Get close to you. Show them your wings. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Uh, Terrence, when he used to, Terrence B says, when he, I used to work at JFK, I used to see South African airline flight attendants walk separate. Why? Walk separately? Uh, no, I think a lot of times um, when they, they get out of the flight deck, uh, no, actually, what I've experienced with my like crew that I fly with, it's always uh, we wait for each other. Like let's say we're going to the hotel or whatever, or leaving the the, the 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 airport, we'd always wait. Like the flight crew, flight deck crew would always wait for the flight attendants. So usually would work, be walking like in a like all together. But then now you get people chatting to their friends along the way. But most most crews that I've seen, I haven't really experienced that issue. Now, as you can see, um, it says here, uh, why would white, black would walk with black and white would walk with white? Why is that? Uh, yeah, as I said, with the flights I've done, I also that, that that would be my experience is that uh, we usually all wait for like for everybody and then we all walk together but then as i said in that whole group depending on how big the crew is obviously if it's like five like 10 of you or whatever uh, now you'll find maybe these two chatting to one another these four chatting to one another so that you get yeah i suppose but as i said i mean we still come from like a history i mean our country still has a history so Sometimes you do get those situations where, yeah, where it happens. But, yeah, a lot of times, a lot of other times it's been, what I've experienced, it's been uh, like, like a, a sort of like close, the crews are close when we wow. go on trips and stuff. Because we'd get to the hotels also, we usually go out together, we go out for dinner together, especially in terms of the flight deck, we usually do all go out together. So... Yeah, I, I suppose it depends on the day and it depends on the person. Yeah. So, yeah, fortunately, you still do get those people, even outside our industry, you still do get, yeah. Well, this this is this is super fascinating. I think uh, you're going to encourage a lot of uh, women. Again, how, how what is the maximum? There's no maximum age. I know here you, you have to retire at 65. Age yeah, no, same, same, same in South Africa. Low retirement age in South Africa is also sixty-five. Um, you get some places where maybe sixty-three, or but that's also the same. It's also the same here. You must just uh, pass your medicals, obviously. So if you can't see and can't hear, then of course, I mean, we go through. We do medicals once a year, 
And then I think once you get a bit older, I think you start doing it twice a year, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, you just need to be able to do to to pass your medicals and then you can continue flying up until retirement. Now, when do you go out again? You're going out tomorrow or today? Tomorrow? Tomorrow? No, 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 I'm not going out now. Apparently, uh, unfortunately, with COVID, it's uh, we've been grounded and um, still going through some stuff. Hopefully, back in the air soon, crossing okay. thumbs. But yes. um, I think the industry worldwide has been like hard hit by COVID. Mm-hmm. But I think it's slowly, slowly getting back on its feet. I think once... Yes. Um, yeah, I think once the numbers like the COVID dates and stuff go down, flying and um, tourism will pick up again. And obviously when it picks up, then flying will pick up again. So, yeah. Well, this is a great encouragement to to, to visit the country, to get more involved in the country. A lot of you black men out here that just keep wanting to go to these Latin countries, you got to learn how to go to your motherland, man. Stop it, man. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Mucha T says you are inspiring and hopefully you visit some schools sometimes to inspire young girls especially black girls sometimes exposure is all that is needed did we spoke about yep. that yes. no, definitely something I've done and something that I still want to do in the future I always believe I mean uh, as I said you actually when you get to those schools you, you just rock up in your uniform before you even say anything you've already made such a big impact so it's mm-hmm. definitely De- definitely, definitely necessary. When when a young girl sees basically that they can do, I mean, if, if they become more encouraged when they see themselves, you know, somebody that looks like them, somebody that comes yeah. from the same similar areas and stuff like that. So definitely very important. We well, hear that little one crying in there. He's like, Mom, get in here, damn it, get in here. He's, he's been looking for me. I had to hide. I'm actually hiding in his bedroom. He's been looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you so, so much. And I want to know, I, I want you to tell the crowd, because I'm not going to be saying it myself, will you come back? Sorry, will I come back? Will- yes, no, definitely. Yeah, I will definitely. I really enjoyed this. No, it was great talking to you. And right. yeah, I'll definitely be back. Well, <laughs> Hopefully appreciate- when I'm back, I'll be back flying. And yeah. <laughs> Yes, and you will be, because I am rooting for you, sister. Last last <laughs> comment. Muchi says, Nate, pound for pound, Cape Town is one of the most beautiful places in the world, though it's still controlled by other folks. We, 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 we need, because even when I bring you back, I need you to give us more education about Africa um, as mm-hmm. well. So to people that may not get lost in the mode of your, your, your other pilot, and that's who you are, but we also want to give them some education, because we need some more African sisters from Africa represented. So, um, Please let your peoples know as well. You know, I definitely want to interview them, especially a, a flight attendant. Um, okay. Um, doesn't have to be, you know, you know if they scared the shorty face, don't worry about it. Tell them they can always do this because you could always do this. You could always block the face like <laughs> <over> that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't, I don't think that would be an issue. <laughs> okay, because they love the camera anyway. Oh, yeah. What's up? Yeah.